snow anchors are really cool because you can build them anywhere. There's snow everywhere we're traveling, and you can build them with, with a lot of different tools, all of which you carry with you on a normal ski tour. I'm going to show you the T trench, also known as a T slot or a dead man. And this is, this is the strongest and most universal of all the snow anchors that you can build with your skis or, or ski touring equipment because you can build it in any kind of snow and it's, it, it has the greatest strength. So if you are lowering somebody or rappelling off it or doing crevasse rescue, this is most likely one of the strongest ones. One of the cool things about the T-Trench is you can build it in any kind of snow. So you can build it in really soft powdery snow or even hard spring snow. And there you might bury a shovel handle or an ice axe. Whereas in, in snow like this, we're gonna bury a pair of skis. There's three basic things that you need to consider when you're, when you're building a T-Trench. One of those is how deep do you need to go? Two is you need to make sure you undercut the lip so the skis can't come out. The third point is that the, the slot, which, is, which forms the T, needs to be deep enough and long enough so that your anchor material doesn't lever your skis up and out of the trench. First thing you need to decide is making sure that your trench is perpendicular to your direction of pull. Okay. Second, it needs to be long enough for your skis. And so I'll just measure ski length here. I need to have a trench that's at least that long. So now I'm happy with the length and the depth of this for the snow quality. I want to make sure that this leading edge is undercut so that the skis can't be pulled up and out of it. Okay, so I've got correct length. I've got good depth for the snow quality. I've undercut the front edge. I want to make sure this is all similar depth so the skis sit in there nice and clean. Depending on the snow quality you have, again, this is on a ridge line. It's pretty wind affected, so it's pretty stiff snow. So I'm going to leave the front of this alone. I'll leave that undisturbed except for my T-slot, which will come out from here. If this was really soft, powdery snow, I might want to work hard in this snow. And I would start with that by stomping that out with skis and boots and let that harden while I dig the rest of this. But for the snow quality we have, we should be good here. The next thing I'm going to do is get my skis ready. I've got ski brakes on these, so I'm going to help deploy those because it'll help keep the skis together. I'm also going to add a ski strap to this. That makes my anchor much more solid. There's no shifting of the skis. If you don't have ski brakes, you should add a second strap. And the whole point of that is to keep the skis from shifting and exposing an edge and therefore jeopardizing your, your anchor material. Okay, now I'm going to cut the T-slot and you can use the tail of a ski, you can use an ice axe, a pole, I'll just use my shovel handle in this case. This needs to be deep enough and long enough so that when my skis are in the bottom of this, wrapped with the anchor material, it's not coming up at all. And again, I want to disturb the snow as little as possible. As you can see, I have to dig pretty far on this and it takes more time because this is a fairly flat slope. If this was steeper, I wouldn't need to dig as deep. It'd be a shorter distance, but I've got quite a ways to get from the bottom of the trench out to where the end of the anchor material is. Now I'm gonna take a sling and clove hitch these skis. If you were using a split board, you could easily substitute the board for skis. Because I've got quite a ways to go here, I'm going to use a quad sling and I'm just going to clove hitch this. And you want to clove hitch in the middle of the ski. So that's usually just behind the binding toe piece. Okay, so I make sure that's nice and snug. And I'm going to lay the skis now. Okay, so now you can see the skis are nice and level in there. They're butt up against the edge of the wall, the leading wall that's undercut, clove hitched to a runner that'll go out to a carabiner. Again, depending on the snow quality you have, you may or may not want to fill this in. If I'm concerned about the snow quality, if I've got really soft light powder that's not very consolidated, 
then I'll fill this in with snow and pack it down. I, this is really good snow quality, so I feel really good about leaving this open as it is. The advantages to leaving it open is it's a lot easier to deconstruct. It'll take a lot less time. Okay, so the last thing I wanna check before I put a carabiner on this is to make sure this runner is nice and level. It's coming from the anchor straight out and not being levered up anywhere. Okay, so I feel good about where this is right now. My slot is deep enough. Put a locking carabiner on the end of this. So one last thing to consider, it's nice just to hollow out a little spot here around your carabiner so that it's not buried in the snow. It's easier to work with that way. Okay, so as you can see, it takes a while to build this anchor, but you can build it anywhere in any kind of snow and it's super bomber.